Yo, what's up guys? We were on baby duty for a little bit, but I was able to get Kylie to watch the baby, my mom to come over and watch the baby so I could sneak away and make this video for you guys. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Benjamin Nowak. This is the Smallmouth Experience, a 100% smallmouth bass fishing focused channel where we talk everything smallmouth bass to go out and catching them and sharing my experiences with you guys. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different. I took subscriber questions or, or follower questions over on my Instagram. So if you guys are not already on my Instagram, if you're not already following me, go check that out. It's at brnoak underscore fishing because you guys can participate and ask me questions that I can answer in future videos. If you guys can see behind me, there's this little snowflake stuff coming down and that's actually going to play a big role in today's video. All this cottonwood, all this dogwood uh, starting to come down around us, which is a big factor during the spawn, giving you guys that identification or that heads up that the spawn is going on. So today's video, we're talking all about the bass fishing spawn, all about how small I'll spawn and ways to find them, catch them and be successful on the water. Now, before we get started, I just wanna say thank you guys for 20,000. We hit 20,000 followers on YouTube, which is absolutely insane. I wouldn't be able to do it without each and every one of you guys. Now we're on to bigger and better things. Let's hit 50,000, 100,000 subscribers. Let's get up to that 100,000 subscriber mark make this thing happen, let's grow this community. If you're not already, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, especially if you guys like to chase smallmouth bass, whether you're in the south, whether you're up north, hit that subscribe button, smallmouth bass fishing content coming at you guys on the regular. Now there are a couple big announcements coming up at the end of the video that you guys aren't gonna wanna miss, so stay tuned for those. Some different things that are going to impact the frequency of the videos on this channel that I think you guys are actually gonna be pretty excited about. So lots of cool things coming, but without further ado, let's kind of dive into the Q&A about bass fishing during the spawn. So we moved inside, it was insanely, insanely hot outside. I was overheating, my camera was overheating and shutting down. So we're gonna answer these questions inside. Now, like I said, these are all Instagram viewer questions. So if you guys wanna participate in the next video that I do like this, go over, follow me on Instagram, at brnoak underscore fishing, so that you guys can have your question heard and answered on these videos. Now the first question that we're going to look at is from Mr. Johnny and Garrett. And I'm sorry if I butchered your, your Instagram handle or your names, but the first question is do smallmouth bed in deeper water than largemouth? Now this is a pretty common question about the differences in largemouth and smallmouth. In fact, I have another question that was asked by Jacob Miller Fishing. Do smallmouth tend to start spawning in similar water temps as largemouth? So I'm going to take this question and I'm going to kind of modify it. We're going to talk about kind of the differences between largemouth and smallmouth when they get up to spawn. Differences in water temp, area, location, aggressiveness, and kind to move through it that way. So with this first question, largemouth versus smallmouth on beds. So like I mentioned earlier, smallmouth actually starts spawning a little bit earlier than largemouth. I'm going to start to look for smallmouth on beds around that 58 degree mark to about 60 degrees, whereas largemouth will spawn around that 60, 63 degree range mark. So you're going to be able to actually start finding smallmouth on beds a little bit earlier as far as water temp goes, then you will largemouth bass. But what that's also going to be driven by is location of where these fish are spawning. A lot of times smallmouth are going to spawn closer to the main lake. They're going to spawn on big flats on the main lake with a little bit of slack water, slightly protected water, as long as it has that right bottom mix. Whereas largemouth will spawn way back up in the creeks, in the very back of creeks, in marinas, in very protected slack water areas. So while smallmouth start spawning in cooler water temps than largemouth, a lot of times that largemouth will get on bed sooner because those backwaters will heat up faster, if that makes any sense. So smallmouth spawn in around 58 degrees is when I'm gonna really start looking for these fish to move up on beds. But because they're closer to the main lake, that water is gonna stay cooler longer. So they actually might spawn later in the year than largemouth. Then you'll be able to find largemouth on beds. Another big thing there is largemouth are insanely more finicky. Largemouth will get on bed and not look at baits that you're throwing to them. It'll take you a long time to get these fish to go, whereas smallmouth are far, 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 I cannot say far, enough times more aggressive than largemouth. They're so much more aggressive than largemouth that you can actually drive over them with the boat, turn back around and catch them about 10 minutes later. So that's actually a technique that I use, especially when I have someone with me. I'll have them on the back with the motor just pushed into gear, pushing me at about two and a half to three miles an hour, and then I'll use the trolling motor to steer the boat. So what I'll do is I'll basically use that to cover a lot water, or cover a lot of water more quickly than I can just with the trolling motor, and not burn up my trolling motor batteries as bad. Don't do this if you're by yourself. You don't want to have that motor going when you're up on the front of the boat with no way to control it. But if you have a buddy who wants to sit back there and kind of keep that motor in gear while you're on the front controlling boat with the, the trolling motor, you guys can do that. But it allows you to cover water a lot faster. And, and kind of that point that I'm touching on, these fish are so much more aggressive that let's say you have a tournament the next day or two days later, you can catch that fish off a of bed 
you can actually turn back around the next day, know exactly that fish was weight and catch that same exact fish. So you know like, okay, I'm gonna go out today and catch about 23 pounds. This was something last year on Lake Champlain, the FLW Tour event when they went there. They were catching smallmouth full-blown spawn. One of the best dudes with a flogger, his name's AJ Sligona. He's a phenomenal smallmouth bed fisherman with a big flogger. He could pretty much call, okay, I have about 15 pounds of fish on beds. I have about 18 pounds of fish on beds. And I remember talking to him prior to day four um, where he was like, man, I probably have 13 pounds of fish on beds, but I'm gonna have to go looking because I don't have any more. So you can catch the same fish day after day and you'll know the exact weight of the fish that you're actually fishing for. Way more aggressive, spawn a little bit cooler water temps. Now another big thing is a lot of times it's very rare to find smallmouth females and male on beds at the same time. As opposed to the largemouth where like you're looking for those fish to be on bed at the same time, the largemouth and the the female and the male. Smallmouth it's very rare to have happen. But don't let that discourage you because the males for smallmouth a lot of times are very much the same size as the female. I don't know why this is, I don't know what causes this phenomenon, but the male and the female are pretty much exactly the same weight more or less every single time. So unless you're fishing for these fish outside of spawning areas, trying to catch them pre-spawn, they're pretty much exactly the same size when they're up on bed. Um, so don't be discouraged by the fact that you're only able to find onesies on beds. A lot of times that onesie is gonna be a big fish. So you can catch male smallmouth that are like five and a half pounds. It's absolutely ridiculous. In fact, I think that video with Alex, we were basically catching all male fish on beds and weighed 26 and a half pounds. Just an absolutely ridiculously insane specimen. So that's kind of like the main differences between largemouth and smallmouth when they come up to spawn. So this next question is from Alec Barrett 15. He says, where to look for beds if you're fishing a new lake? And what's so interesting about smallmouth is how predictable their beds are gonna be. You can pretty much look at a lake map and say, okay, there's an island, or there's a main lake flat, or there's a hard channel swing with a big flat on the backside of it, and there's pretty much gonna be big fish on beds there. But what's different is you need to cover a lot of water. You can't say, okay, they're gonna be on this island and fish the entire island and expect fish to be all the way around that thing. You're looking for very very specific bottom composition for these fish to spawn on. So you need to cover a lot of water. When you find that right bottom composition, which we'll talk about here in a minute, you'll find like three, four, five, six, maybe even up to 20 or 50 beds. A lot of times smallmouth will spawn in big colonies or pods of fish. So instead of finding onesies and twosies, if you find a fish on bed and you have the right bottom composition, the right area of the lake, which is like dependent on the style of body of water you're fishing, you can find a bunch of fish on beds in a very, very small area. So kind of talking about that right composition, what I'm looking for a lot of times is a hard bottom area where these fish's eggs will have the best chance of survival, where they can physically fan out an area to make a bed. So what that means is I'm not looking around these giant boulder fields or these large flats with just expansive sheetrock or just giant flats of beach sand. I'm looking for some sort of transition in bottom composition where there's like two types of bottom compositions mixing. And one of my favorite spots actually has what's called uh, marl. It's basically a short grass with some of this like shell stuff mixed in. The reason that works so well for these fish to spawn on is that they can fan out an area, have some of that shell on the bottom for their eggs to stick to and clump to, and that marl will stand up and give them a little bit of protection from the elements. Another really good area is big pencil reeds. So where you see pencil reeds coming out of the water, these fish will actually come in there and they'll spawn in those pencil reeds, and that provides a great habitat for these fish to spawn. Basically what you're looking for is some sort of bottom composition transition that's gonna give these fish the best opportunity for their eggs to survive. And finally, another really good area is that smaller pea gravel or gravel style of a rock. The reason this works so well is that smallmouth can spawn on that rock and they'll take the time that it actually takes to fan that rock out to make themselves a perfect bed. Um, to give their eggs the best chance of survival. So look for some sort of composition change on the bottom. Look for something a little bit different than big flat boulder fields or, or flat sheet rock or beach sand where two different types of compositions meet. That's where you're gonna typically find the most smallmouth bass beds. So now you guys are probably asking yourselves, okay, what does a bass bed actually look like though? Because I fish a lot of these areas but I'm not really finding fish on beds. And uh, it's really going to be a tough question to answer because it's going to depend on the style of body water that you're fishing. Now up here in northern Michigan, um, in mid-Michigan, where you're fishing those glacial style bodies of water, a lot of times there are those big emerald circles or those big green or blue orbs down there on the bottom that you guys can see from a long ways away. But if you're fishing tannic styles of bodies of water, where it's that tea colored water, they could be 
white spots or those yellow circles that you'll see or even just big black spots what you're really looking for is some sort of difference and a lot of times they're going to be round in shape once you find one bed you can get a feel for what the beds look like on your body of water and barring any like drastic clarity differences that's what the beds are going to look like for the most part on your body of water they'll change like i said they'll vary depending on what the lake light is like and what the composition is on the bottom but for the most part once you find one that's what your beds are going to look like across the lake. Another question that I get a ton is what depth are you typically looking for beds in? And that's really going to be depending on the style of body of water that you're fishing. But a really interesting phenomenon is that I've found fish in like one foot of water, even on ultra clear style bodies of water, where the water is 30, 40 foot visibility, you can still find them on beds in really, really shallow water as, well, as long as that bottom composition is right. So kind of get that out of your mind. Like, okay, I need to look in four to six foot of water. I need to look in 15 to 20 foot of water. Look where you're comfortable, be able to find that right bottom mixture where you know these fish are spawning and kind of look for them on beds. Now I will say in these cleaner style bodies of water, on your glacial style bodies of water, these fish will bed extremely deep, like deeper than you can physically see with your eyes, deeper than the light penetration. And so a lot of guys are using what's called a flogger and I got a ton of questions on this. It's basically a big orange traffic cone and you use it to break the water to be able to look down and see these fish on beds when there's a little bit of ripple on the water. So they'll spawn out in 15, 18, 20, 30 plus feet of water on these really clear bodies of water. But don't limit yourselves to saying, okay, everyone says I need to be looking four to six foot. Kind of keep an open mind, cover a lot of water, and look for these fish all the way up onto the bank out into as deep of water as you're comfortable fishing on beds. A lot of times those deeper beds are going to be a little bit less pressured, so if you can find those, they'll be a little bit easier to catch the fish off of. But for the most part, don't worry. You can find beds all the way up to the bank, all the way out to 20 foot of water, depending on your visibility. I thought this next question was pretty funny. It's from my buddy Nolan Miner, who, if you guys don't know him, he is an absolute hammer, catches not only smallmouth, but largemouth. Uh, striper, basically anything that swims, Nolan catches it. His question was, are smallmouth actually difficult to catch on beds? Like, are there any difficult smallmouth to catch on beds? Believe it or not, I found some that are pretty locked jaw. A lot of times this isn't the case. If you can see them, you can typically catch them. But when they're on bed for a long period of time, when they've been messed with over and over and over again, they'll get kind of smart, especially if they're just about done guarding that bed and most of the fry has moved off. They can be really tough to catch. So that seven to 10 days after they've been on bed a long time, they can be tougher to catch. But for the most part, smallmouth are pretty easy. So myth busted, smallmouth are actually pretty uh, pretty easy to catch for the most part. But there are a couple that can be really, really finicky no matter how hard you try to catch them. Bump them on the head a bunch of times, you still can't really get them to go. Now I got another question asking me specifically about using live scope to find bedding smallmouth. And do I use live scope in particular? Not necessarily the live scope forward as you guys would know it, but I've started using perspective mode, which is essentially like a 150 degree beam out in front of the boat similar to side scan out in front of the boat where I've found a couple beds, but I've not really played around with that much. Now for electronics, one thing that is really cool to do though is use your side view to find deeper bedding smallmouth. Now this is something that really came from like the bluegill fishermen. You'd be able to use your side scan to find bluegill beds. You can use that same principle, use it for deeper bedding smallmouth by using your side view on those ledges sort of towards that secondary flat. You can find some deeper bedding smallmouth that way. What's really interesting to me is how many guys are actually catching fish off of beds that they don't realize are on beds because they're fishing that break and these fish are coming up and they're dragging a tube through a bed and catching them in that deeper water. So kind of keep an eye on your side scan, keep an eye on your side view. Um, you can cover a lot of water and find some really cool deeper beds with some big fish on them that other guys are missing because they're up on the bank fishing really, really shallow. So am I using live scope forward to find these beds? Not typically. I've started using that perspective mode, which is kind of unique. Um, you can sit off them about 30, 40 feet and still see the bed on your, your perspective mode and catch them that way. But that's something I've only played with a little bit. For me, side view is like a really, really key tool though that uh, has caught me a lot of fish off of beds that other guys are missing. And finally, this question comes from Bennett G underscore fishing. What are the best all around bed fishing baits? And I really have three that I wanna to talk to you guys about. The first one is going to be a Ned Rig. A Ned Rig works the best for me when these fish are feeding on gobies or crawfish that are moving along the bottom. Keep in mind what these fish are actually protecting their beds from. And if it's something along the bottom, I go to something like a Ned Rig where I can drag that bait through the bed. For example, in that last video with Alex where we were catching this fish on this goby bait, I could physically see these bass chasing gobies off of beds. And so this goby bait, this Ned Rig worked perfect 
because you could glide that bait into the bed. You can typically watch how these fish are reacting to that bait and you can get that fish to eat a bottom bouncing bait because they're guarding their bed from something on bottom. Just really want to match what they're using or what they're protecting their bed from. Now there's two different styles of Ned Rig baits that I like to use when they're on beds. And this is going to get really particular. You guys don't have to be this particular, but I found it makes a difference, especially when you're looking at them and you can see how they're reacting. The first one is the TRD Ticklers from Z-Man. I really like this bait when I just need to drag something through the bed. The reason I like this is because it's a really small presentation, small profile bait, easy for that fish to eat, and it stands up pretty much straight off of the bottom um, on a do it Midwest finesse head. Now what makes this bait so good is basically that really small profile. I think these little tentacles do move a little bit of water, but for the most part, it just kind of sits in front of their face and you can drag it in the bed and really not move it a whole ton and still get these fish to go. So if I'm just looking for a bait to drag through the bed, I like this TRD Ticklers, really small profile. The hook comes, you know, just in front of these tentacles. So if they eat the bait, if they try to grab that bait, typically they're grabbing the hook. Um, another way that I like to fish this bait is swimming at around beds, especially if I know these fish are still kind of cruising. I'll take this and fish it very similar to a hair jig where I'll take it and just swim it. Because it's round, that water comes around that body really easily and it just has a super do nothing profile coming through the water. So fishing it either a long bottom, like dragging it into a bed, or swimming it around beds, the TRD Ticklers from Z-Man gets the nod. Now, if I see that they're eating gobies, and those gobies are like sliding in and scooting through the bed, and these fish are actively chasing them off, I wanna go with something that has a flatter bottom. Now, the reason that this goby from my buddy Handmade Fishing works so well is because it has this flat bottom. Now, what that does is actually allows me to glide this bait through the water column in front of those fish. Not only does it do that, but it also looks super natural. So that flat bottom lets me glide this bait basically right above bottom, hovering bottom, and looks super, super natural, like the same movement that a goby has when they're trying to come through the bed. So those flat bottom baits, like this goby right here, works really, really well. So when you're looking for a net rig bait, keep in mind of how those fish are eating it, whether it's dragging it through or sitting it in front of them, or do they need something kind of gliding through their bed, like a flat bottom bait like this. And you can really kind of get particular um, and pick out what would be like the right bait to fish on that bed based on what those fish are eating. So the next bait that I will fish on a bed is a drop shot. And this bait right here is just a Berkeley flatworm. Um, one of my all time favorite drop shot baits. Pick up your favorite drop shot bait, a bait you have confidence in, and fish it through their beds. This is particularly effective if they're chasing, you know, bigger bait fish or bluegill off their beds and you just need something to hang in front of their face off of the bed, a drop shot works really well. Now I have this nose hooked, but another way that I'll fish this, especially if they're just grabbing the tail of this thing and pulling it off their bed, is I'll take and thread this thing on like a jig trailer. That'll move this hook a little bit further back into the bait. Um, so if they grab that bait, they'll have a little bit better opportunity to get the hook. But for the most part, I'll start with the nose hook bait, then I'll adjust if I need to. The other thing I play with a lot is my leader length. I want this bait basically hovering directly in front of that fish's face. So depending on how deep your beds are, you wanna get this leader so this bait is basically just right in front of their face and hold it there for as long a period of time as possible until they get ticked off enough to eat it. And finally, drop shot weight. This is something that I think a lot of people overlook when they're bed fishing because they think they're smallmouth and it doesn't really matter. I like to go relatively heavy. Now I believe this is a, a 3 8 ounce drop shot weight and the reason that I like the size, it's a little bit heavier than most people are using, but a smallmouth isn't as easily able to blow your bait off the bed. When you have a little bit bigger drop shot weight, um, you can hold that bait on the bed better without that fish being able to pick up your bait and move it off or being able to actually physically blow your drop shot off the bed with their mouth. So use a little bit heavier weight when you're bed fishing. Even if it seems excessive, I promise you it's gonna get you a lot more bites when that bait's sitting on that bed and they can't move it away by just blowing it off or they can't just grab the tail and pull that thing off as easily when you're using like a, an eighth ounce weight or something. So go to a little bit heavier on that drop shot weight, play with leader length, um, and then pick the favorite drop shot bait of choice hold that thing in front of them and they'll eat it. And finally, this is kind of a bait that's come into play over the past couple of years for me. This is a little marabou hair jig. This thing is great for fishing around the pre-spawn. You can fish it on beds during the spawn or you can fish it around the beds. Um, and just a really, really good natural profile. The reason that I like this thing, and this is 3 30 seconds of an ounce, is because of the hair. It has a very natural movement when it's sitting on the bed. Now I'll almost exclusively fish a 3 30 seconds ounce, um, but you can go up to an eighth if you feel like it's too light. Basically just kind of match the depth that you're fishing. 
And when I'm bed fishing with this thing, I will actually sit it on the bed. But for the most part, during the pre-spawn and post-spawn, I'm keeping that thing moving. So when I'm bed fishing with the hair jig, set this thing on their bed, let it just kind of naturally undulate, wait for that fish to swim off, and you can catch some giants on this that other guys are missing by fishing uh, some of the bigger baits. Those are my three favorite bed fishing baits. The baits that I'll go to, you don't have to get too crazy or complicated. These are smallmouth. Keep something in front of them. Understand what they're eating off of their bed or keeping off of their bed and pick the drop shot or the net rig or the hair jig as it fits best for the attitude of that fish. So before we end this thing, I just want to give you guys a couple updates on the channel. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I had a baby uh, over the weekend. It is four days old. It was born on the 5th, so today's the 9th. It's four days old. My life has changed drastically. Now, that's not going to stop me from giving you guys as much content as possible. I actually have videos scheduled out through the end of June, so there's going to be content rolling regularly. With that said, I want to go back to daily videos. This is something I love doing at the beginning of quarantine with people out for summer, with kids out for summer. You guys are looking for more fishing information, especially as these fish are chewing, they're eating. I want to give you guys as much content as I possibly can. So I have videos scheduled out to the end of June for daily videos. So stay tuned every single day, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on my channel. I'm going to have a new video coming for you guys as often as I possibly can, which for me is going to try to be every single day. Now, what I'm asking from you guys, if you want to support the channel, do me a favor, drop me video ideas down in the comment section. I'm not asking for money, you're not asking for anything, just video ideas, things you guys actually care to see, because that's gonna allow me to keep making videos on a regular basis for you guys, because I'll have content that you guys actually care about. But I wanna thank you guys again for all of the support that you guys have shown me, whether it's on Instagram, or it's on YouTube, or I'm growing my TikTok. Just so many awesome messages of support and care, and I just wanna thank say thank you to each and every one of you guys. We just hit 20,000, let's get to 100,000. Let's keep this thing rolling and growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But as always, take care of tight lines. God bless, pursue passion.